Hello and welcome to C Programming Zero to Neural Networks. Today we are doing a Vim Quick Start Guide or a Vim forward slash Neo Vim Quick Start Guide. So there's plenty of these kind of things on the internet already and uh, I'm going to take my approach is going to be to start where the uh, Vim Tutor leaves off. So if you've just installed Vim or you're new to Vim, if you type Vim Tutor it's going to load you into an interactive tutorial which takes about half an hour to go through and um, it's uh, definitely the best place to start with learning Vim. And uh, it's not something that it really transposes well to a video. I mean, I just went through the Vim tutor. You've got to, kind of got to do it yourself, and uh, it'll it'll teach you the basics of getting around the Vim interface, how to how to navigate, how to copy, how to paste, how to quit, <laughs> and all those sorts of things. And uh, I, the, what I'm going to go through here is a basic same configuration, something to start off with, and. Um, uh, and sort of uh, reinforce some of the most useful commands, the ones that you want to commit to muscle memory in your fingers straight away. So basically how to get started with Vim. It takes a long time to really get good with Vim. It's not something you're going to learn in a day or two. And it does take an investment of time. And uh, I'm certainly not making a recommendation that you should use Vim, just because I do. There's a, there's a lot a lot said on the internet in, um, in the various social media worlds of what the best text editor is and what the worst text editor is and what text editor you should use. Uh, I think uh, text editor is uh, a bit like clothes. Um, it's a matter of personal taste and a personal style. If we all wore the same clothes, it would be a pretty boring world, wouldn't it? So, you know, you should find something that you like to use and, uh, and get good at it and stick with it. No text editor is going to make you a better program. It's not going to make you write better code. And at the end of the day, no one really cares what text editor you use. When you're playing some amazing game that was programmed by some amazing game studio, do you, do you ever even consider what text editor was used to write it? No, you don't. No one cares. <laughs> it's a personal thing. It's about it's about your style and your taste. And uh, I particularly like Vim. It's it's very well suited to uh, system level programming and C programming, which is obviously what I'm into and what I'm doing here. Uh, I find for things like web dev, VS Code is actually very good because it, you're dealing with lots of files, really long lines, and uh, it's more mouse orientated. And obviously, you do if you're doing web dev, you're back and forth with your web browser all the time, and that. So, you know, it's it's not just about what what text editor is uh, you like. It's also about what's the right tool for the job. So let's get started with our Vim Quick Start Guide, um, and uh, this will show you cover the basics. And uh, if you're considering using Vim, this might give you an idea of, of whether it's worth the time to invest. So let's start by making a um, a C file. Basically, I've I've uh, backed up my configuration. We've gone back to vanilla, just installed NeoVim. Oh, I use NeoVim um, rather than Vim. They're basically the same. The configuration works the same. Everything is the same. I mostly just like that it's called NeoVim, which is a pretty cool name. So, <laughs> you know, that's not a great reason to use a text editor, but you know, it's my reason and it's good enough for me. So let's do a test.c. So we've got some C code. So this is the basic, um, what you start with, with a, with a vanilla Vim, with uh, some very unusual color choices. So let's do, let's make a basic C program. Include stdio.h. Let's do int main. As always, return a zero, and uh, let's print out hello world. Now, uh, we won't bother with compiling any of this. Uh, we're going to make some functions, just some empty functions to, to fill out the page. So we've got a bit of bit of text on the screen. So let's do a void function one return zero. Let's do a couple of them. Give these different names, make sure it's compilable code, hey, even though it is just an example. Test one, let's put some more comments in, make sure this test two. There you go, that'll do as well. Too. Oh, I've got two mains there, and I copied too much. Um, test three. There we go. So that's what our basic code looks like in a, in a vanilla standard, freshly installed Vim configuration. So what we want to do is change that. The first thing we want really is line numbers, don't we? I find line numbers to be an essential part of programming. I like to be able to see what line I'm on about, to be able to jump from the line I'm on to another line, that kind of thing. <coughs> so let's get started. So your Vim configuration goes, well, let's say you're using NeoVim, it goes in config forward slash nvim. This directory won't be made uh, by default. Uh, you have to mkdir make your nvim directory, which will be an empty directory. And in there, you want to create an init.vim. 
which is your, your init.vim file. It your, initializes your vim. So if we want to set line number in, nice and easy, we do set number. Go back to vim, and now we've got line numbering. And this is um, the traditional style line number in it's sequential. Um, it's in a slightly striking color of being in yellow. But um, this is what you get if you set set number. Now you'll you'll notice that I use and a lot of programmers use relative line number in it. Have I spelled that wrong? R e l a t i v n u m b e r. There we go. Set relative number, which looks a bit unusual. Um, the current line you're on is always zero, and then it sort of ex uh, it goes up and down sequentially either side of it. And this is handy because you can jump. You can obviously jump around the, the code really easily. Let's say if you want to jump up to this line here, it's nine away from where you are. So if you press nine, then up, you'll jump straight to that. And then obviously nine and down, and you'll jump back to the way you were before. Um, you can use, you can jump to exactly line. So you can, if you want to jump to exactly line five, you press five, shift G, and you'll jump exactly to line five. So you can, you can jump around code easily, whether you're using relative line numbers or, or normal sequential line numbers. I just find that this is a bit easier to see um, uh, with, on the page, that you're, the actual sort of window of code that you're working on. And um, I've just got used to looking at it. Now, one downside of using relative line numbers, it doesn't tell you what line you're on, does it? It's zero. That's not very helpful, is it? Now, you can change that with a bit of a... Um, an extra setting if we do set number first before we do the set relative number. Now we get the best of both worlds, kind of. We get relative line numbering and the number of the line that we're on. Handy. So that's that's kind of the configuration I use. I use set number, set relative number. Now our tabs here are eight eight spaces. Um, Linus Torvalds, who made the Linux kernel. He thinks that tabs should be eight spaces and only eight spaces. <laughs> but a lot of people have sort of changed their conventions lately and uh, in recent years. And we've moved to sort of more four tabs, four space tab width. And even a lot of people use two, two space tab width. I stick, I, I like four. So if we want to set that, we do set uh, tab stop equals four, set shift. I'll spell shift width equals four, and I like to do set expand tab. Now, when we reload this code, all the tabs have reverted to four. The expand tab, if I do a tab there, I can move back the tabs being converted into four spaces, and I like uh, like that style. So we're getting somewhere now. We've got a, a bit more of a reasonable configuration for our for our neo vim for our vim. Now, the next thing we need to turn our attention to is the colors. So before we go to the syntax highlight, highlighting, let's sort out the, the coloring for our line numbers. So to do line numbers, we can, if we do col uh, colon hi for highlight, enter, we're going to get a list of all the things that we can set colors for. And you'll, it's got the, what we're currently set to. And uh, here we can find line number and what our line numbers are currently set to and the actual color of them, which is yellow. Now, the colors are C term colors. C term FG stands for C term foreground equals 11. If we want to see what those colors are, we do C term colors into Google. There we go, that's the one I've always used. We can get a list of all the different C term colors with the number codes and what their hex code they relate to. So they're all the colors we can use. I think it's 256, 255, 255 colors, 256 if you include the zero. So to highlight a color, we do hi, hi, line, nr for line number, which uh, we've just seen in the highlight. And uh, we want to do C term foreground equals and we need to set this to a color let's see what color we're going to set it to uh let's do a gray i like the uh, the range of grays in fact if i do two four two i think that's a reasonable mid gray yeah there we go so now we've got ghosted out gray line numbers which i which is what i do which is what i like that my sort of preferred style for the line numbers i don't like them to be too bright if you know i mean i just want to see them if i ever need to but one thing i like to do is have the line number, the current line number I'm on, highlighted to um, a, like a different color. So it stands out a little bit more. 
So how do you do that? Well, it turns out that's actually quite a tricky thing to do. So let's go through how to do that. So what we need to do, let me do the colors last. If we do set a cursor line, we get a very unusual result. We get an actual cursor line appearing on here. I've never seen anyone use this style of configuration before. <laughs> it's an unusual setting. You definitely know what line number you're on though, don't you? <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't miss your line number. Um, the, the line that you're on. <laughs> it's got like an, almost an 80s feel to it, I think. An like 80s programming feel. <laughs> so what we want to do is, we, do, we have got what we want though. We have got this is now a different color, but we're stuck with uh, these lines that we need to get rid of. So we need to highlight them. So if we go to high, let's see if we can find it. Cursor line NR, and then there's a cursor line as well somewhere. I can't see it right this second. We need to set the colors for those. So if we do high cursor line, uh, and then we need to do cursor line and all this. High cursor line, C term foreground equals none. C term background equals none. C term equals none to get clear all the styles, GUI equals none. So that removes all the styling from the cursor line. So now we've got rid of that bit but we've still got an unusual sort of line underneath the current line number. So we have to get rid of that as well. So I think you do high cursor line NR for that. And we basically do the same thing, but we can set our foreground color for the number. So let's leave that as yellow. C term background equals none. C term equals none. GUI equals none. And boom, we've got ourselves a rational configuration now, haven't we? That actually looks quite cool. That's exactly what I use. I think that, that looks the best. You don't have to use yellow. Obviously, you can use any color you want for your, for your current active line number. Um, the next thing we want to do is change the color of this, this here, which is called the status line. So, you can find it. It's around here somewhere. Status line, which is currently set to this. And it's a reversed color, so the background and foreground are the other way around. So high status line C term FG equals um, 242 C term FG equals 11. So we've got that the right way around. Yeah, so we can have a yellow, uh, yellow status line with black text. If that's your thing, if that's what you're into. If you, uh, if you wanna go for a very blocky yellow theme. If we reverse these the other way around, 242, 11, it's like the other way around. Hmm. I've done the foreground twice, haven't I? I thought that wasn't working as expected. Had it right the first time around, didn't I? That's what I was going for, a sort of gray and yellow kind of theme. So the grays, is, in fact, we need a slightly darker gray. Let's go for three, six. As you can tell, I've got a lot of the C-term colors memorized because I've spent a lot of time configuring um, these kinds of things. Well, did I say it before? A lot of people think that um, configuring your text editor is a, is a procrastination and a waste of time and you should just do a simple configuration and get on with your life and write programs. I actually think tailoring your text editor to exactly what you like to look at is really important. Um, it's not something you want to spend every week re, redoing and, um, and changing all your, all your settings all the time and always tinkering because that probably is procrastination. But getting your text editor into a state where you really like to use it and it really feels like it's customized and personalized to you, I think is very important. It's a very important part of, um, of uh, having a healthy relationship with writing programs and um, it'll certainly help with your motivation and uh, keep you going if you're using an interface that you, uh, that you configured yourself to your own specification that you really enjoy using. So definitely go to town on your text editor and you know really make an effort <laughs> with it with your vim config it's a really enjoyable way to spend a, like a sunday afternoon or something <laughs> if you're new to all this if you're new to all this obviously you, you, you might already know the basics but anyone who doesn't is watching this video um yeah i mean look at all the look at all the colors you can highlight you can you can do everything <laughs> so that all that really leaves is um doing the syntax highlighting so 
first of all, let's do some comments. If you want to do a comment in your init.vim, you use a, a double quote. So let's do global settings there. Let's do um, interface colors. And then let's do um, syntax highlight. Let's do syntax highlights. So I won't change them all because that would be a bit of a boring thing to go through. Let's just change the type. Let's find out where they are. So you've got string, to do, error, character, constant, boolean, number, float. You can change them all. You can change the colors for every single thing you could think of. Let's just change type, which is obviously data types, in, float, and so forth. So we obviously do high type, and we're going to go C term, foreground equals two, uh, one, so we do red. And then we've got um, red types, Darth Vader style. <laughs> this pink is a bit of an unusual choice as a default, I think, for, um, for whatever that is, whatever that class that is. And that's it, that's, that's basically a good starting configuration of a Vim. Now, with Vim and with NeoVim in particular, you can configure, you can add loads of plugins and loads of extras, and you can have you know file trees that you can search. I tend to keep a very simple configuration because I use Vim as a text editor and use the operating system to do all the operating system kind of stuff. I don't treat Vim as a development environment. I treat it as a text editor. Um, there, there's another text editor which uh, is used for programming it's called Emacs if <laughs> you've heard of it and uh, you may be aware that there's been a bit of a war going on for about 40 years now about which is the best best approach they've actually got slightly different philosophies of Vim and Emacs if you're not sure which one is for you the main differences are Vim is designed to be um, as it is the, the best configuration it can be in a lot of thought has gone into uh, what keys do what, what keys run what commands. Uh, the most used commands are in the most convenient places, the least used commands are sort of more on the periphery. And um, the idea is you have a sort of common configuration so you can log into any system, if it's got Vi, Vim or NeoVim installed, you can, you can just use it straight away. Emacs takes a different approach. Emacs starts with having um, key bindings which are treated as suggestions, or it's just like an idea of um, where to get started with Emacs. The idea of Emacs is you configure it to your own personal taste. Um, so as, a, as and when you develop a relationship with a particular language, you begin to make key bindings which make using writing code in that language more convenient and more straightforward. It's a matter of opinion on which is the best approach. Obviously you can do either with either text editor. You can redo all the key bindings for Vim. It's highly configurable, just like Emacs is highly configurable. You can change everything if you want, but you will find that Vim users very rarely change any of the core key bindings. What Vim users often do is add um, macros to, um, to the, uh, the key binding. So rather than just having something that having to run a series of commands, they'll, they'll create a macro that runs those series of commands with a single key press. You know, they don't actually change the, um, the, the base configuration. They, uh, whereas with Emacs, um, using one person's Emacs is practically impossible. You'd have to have a long conversation with them about all the different, or read their documentation about all the key bindings they've made. So, um, yeah, the, the different approaches, um, whichever one you prefer. I, I'd probably recommend trying them both out, but I find Vim to be, I like the default configurations. I think they're very well thought out. So let's run through a couple of them now. So we won't do any more configuration. We're just gonna run through, not a huge amount, just, um, oh, I've messed up my interface. Uh, let's fix this. Um, scripts, slash, I changed to the DC tile, my data call Linux tile. Uh, I spelled that correctly, no. dc underscore tile dot sh. I'm sure that's what it is. Why is that not working? dc underscore script slash dc underscore tile dot sh. Yes. That's how I do my uh, my setup. <laughs> Right, let's go through a few uh, a few basic Vim commands. So, 
You've just done what you've imped you and you've got your basic idea of how to open a file, how to move around. Uh, the first thing, obviously, you want to practice is using HJKL as your arrow key. So you want to be able to move up and down and left and right using HJKL. I use them both. I use arrow keys when I'm sort of leaning back and browsing some code. When I'm actually typing code, I use HJKL. So you don't have to forget that the arrow keys exist, but it's much better to use these uh, HJKLs because yeah, your hands stay where, where you know where your typing hands are. You know, and that's the idea of it. That's why they're there. Um, moving to the beginning of the line and the end of the line is something that you do all the time, all day, every day, no matter what language you, you, you're using. So how you do that in Vim is Hold down shift four moves you to the end of the line. Shift six moves you to the beginning of the line. And if, you, if you've got parentheses somewhere in, in, in your line, shift five moves you inside the parentheses and you can start typing. And even if you've got like in X, in Y inside those parentheses, if you press shift uh, five percent, basically to start typing, you're gonna, you're gonna be at the inside edge of the rightmost bracket. And that's um, those, those those combinations: shift four, shift five, and shift six. You use them all the time because we're always moving towards the end and the beginning of the line when we're programming. Next thing is copying and pasting. Obviously, you've been through that, so you definitely want to get that down. So, if you want to print out "Hello World" again, you do "Y Y" and then you press P to paste. If you want to print out ten "Hello Worlds," you can do ten P. Oh, ten P, and you can print that out ten times or 100 p and you print out 100 times. Press U to undo and it'll get rid of the last command. Pretty basic stuff, gone through in the Vim tutor, but obviously copying and pasting, we're copying and pasting all the time. There is another mode to Vim, that's not, I don't think it's covered in the Vim tutor, it's visual block mode. If we press Shift V, then we can select multiple lines. And if we press, with those lines selected, if we press Shift right angle bracket, we'll indent, indent what, like one tab width that way shift left angle bracket and we'll indent back the other way so you have visual block mode shift v or control v if we're just selecting um, specific bits of a line or something shift v selects the whole line control v selects a little bit of a line um if you want to we're in normal mode here so we're not in insert mode and we want to start writing some text right below that line what we do is press o and then they were automatically in insert mode ready to type text right there indented exactly the place of the previous line if we undo that what if we want to do one above if we want to insert above where we press shift o and then we're automatically ready to type above that line so that's once again what, are, what very very useful use that all the time so arrow keys copying and pasting moving to yeah moving around uh, to the beginning and the end of a line all really useful stuff and definitely where you want to begin And obviously exiting, control Q, control Q, exclamation mark, quit without saving, control W, Q, right and quit. All covered in the Vim Tutor. And uh, you're gonna be using those a lot. So one final thing to cover on this Vim Quick Start Guide, because as I said, I can't do better than the Vim Tutor. And just point out that moving, that the basic navigation, HJKL arrow keys moving to the start and the end of the line and copying and pasting and then inserting the line above, inserting the line below. Start there. They're the, they're the best plate, they're the best things to memorize. You pick that up in a day or two doing that. And uh, the faster, the, the, the more it's programmed into your muscle memory, the more that becomes, those operations become natural. The, uh, the sooner you're going to sort of get Vim, if you know what I mean. You'll, it'll all make sense. It'll be like, I get this. I get the rationale behind it. I get the thinking that's gone into it. And uh, I'm, you know, if, you, if you're into it, if you, if you connect with it, if you uh, if, 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 it, if it, you find it's the right text editor for you, then you're going to get well into it once you've got those basics sort of mastered and, and, and done. Uh, so the final thing I'll mention is about the caps lock key. So there is... Um, Let's go to let's go to this. Let's load up the um, H H K B, which is the Happy Hacking Keyboard. And we got a good picture of one somewhere, something that looks high quality. That's not the right one. That is absolutely not the right one. Here we are. That's a good one. 
happy hacking keyboard. It's a famous programming style keyboard. Before we had all these mechanical keyboards and that, and, and that they all really took off. Back in the day, we had this Japanese keyboard that was made just for hackers, just for programmers. And you'll notice something unusual about this keyboard. It doesn't have a control key here. It's got the control key here where you would expect the uh, caps lock key to be. And if you look just, if you can see just underneath that tab, we've, got, we've still got a caps lock, but we have to press like function tab to use the caps lock. So why is that the case? The reason is that the control key being down here means you have to reach with your little finger to get to the control key. And if you're using the control key all the time, like we do in, uh, well, in most computers, to be honest, it's, a, it's quite a heavily used key, but especially in a, in a Vim style text editor, there's lots of operations that require the control key. Uh, whereas with the caps lock, how often do you press caps lock? Even if you're a SQL programmer and you're always doing things in capitals, you probably just hold down shift to do the capital letters, don't you? And uh, it's in a really good place, the caps lock key, isn't it? It's right in the, it's on, we call the, that center line of the keyboard uh, the home line. And it's right there. It's really easy to press if you, if you put your hands in normal position where you've got your, your fingers on the little nubbing bits on your F and uh, H keys. Then pressing that caps lock key with your little finger, it's just right there, isn't it? So what a lot of um, um, Vim users do is remap their um, caps lock key to control and just don't have a caps lock key. I still like having a caps lock key, so I, I can probably look at it. Um, X mod map. So I clear the lock, clear the control, add control to caps lock, uh, and then add caps lock to shift caps lock, basically. <laughs> so if I, uh, if I press caps lock, it actually does a control. If I press shift caps lock, it does a caps lock, which is, so I kind of get the best of both worlds in there. And uh, I think that's a really good addition to it. I think that's, um, I mean, this keyboard is quite famous, apparently. Um, I think it was the first time that um, we really had this kind of compact style keyboard. I don't, when, when did it come out? When did the HHKB came out? There's got to be a Wikipedia article about it. Two thousand and six. Two thousand and six. Long before the uh, the mechanical keyboard craze uh, that we now have. And um, yeah, one of the one of the best features of it is that the control key is there. And obviously, we can all emulate that. It's a bit tricky with Linux um, doing um, key key remaps and that, but you know, it can be done. Look at look at it. You can do a bit of a look up on the internet, and uh, if you especially if you're starting with Vim, I would recommend doing that straight away and uh, learning that way, so you don't have to relearn it later on. Um, use your caps lock as control, and um, yeah, it's just it. It's not going to make you any faster or anything, but it just makes it that bit more bit more enjoyable using Vim and less strain on your fingers. Right, that about does it for this uh, this very lengthy quick start guide that I've done. Slow start guide. <laughs> I think I just wanted to talk about Vim because I got a new keyboard and um, I'm having to like relearn how to type again because honestly I've got 10 years of just non-stop typing on ThinkPad keyboards. I've got two, th well, I've got three ThinkPads. One's really old that I don't really use for anything. I've just got it for novelty's sake. But I've got two main laptops. I've got my main programming laptop and my tinkering laptop that I use for you know, other things. If I'm doing like client server programs, then it's nice to have a completely separate machine just to, it just feels better seeing it, seeing them, rather than just having two terminal windows open. It's, it's good seeing two computers communicate with each other, I think anyway, it feels a bit more real, it feels a bit more real. But I've got two ThinkPads and uh, I'm very, very used to typing on a ThinkPad keyboard or them old school style terminal Dell keyboards. I can, I can handle them pretty well. But um, mechanical keyboard, uh, I'll get used to it. I'll get used to it. I do really like it. I like the idea of being fast on it as well. So I'll persevere with it. I'll persevere with it. But because I've been doing that, maybe um, sort of think about, you know, the whole Vim thing and the whole key binders thing and the whole getting around the keyboard quickly. <laughs> so let's summarize this video. Let's finish off with a bit of an outro. Um, Vim is a very good text editor. NeoVim also, you know, same thing with it's different style configuration and it's in continual development, which is good. They're really good text editors for C style programming. And um, 
And I would highly recommend you avoid the conversation about what is the best text editor. And when you get good at him, if you do decide to get good at him, don't be all like superior to, <laughs> to people who are using VS Code, because that's what a lot of people seem to do. Don't get caught up in that trap. Um, it's just the right tool for the job mentality. If you're writing system level programming and you're, you're doing a lot of work on the command line, you want a, I think you want a nice, simple text editor to jump into and jump out of dead easily. And um, Vim is perfect for that. And it comes with really good defaults, really good key bindings, well worth learning. It's not necessarily make, make you write code any faster, but it'll make writing code that little bit more enjoyable. And it's another thing to learn as well, which, you know, if you're into programming, you're going to have to get used to the idea of learning all the time. Is another thing to learn, another thing to get good at, and another thing to master. And it does feel really good when you're kind of in the flow of things and you're just programming on your own and you just everything's sort of coming out nicely and code's just almost appearing on your screen in front of you. Uh, and you're sort of coding just as you think, as thoughts are coming into your mind, everything's sort of, sort of just appearing on the screen. And uh, it's very satisfying getting to that level with him. It took me years to be able to do that kind of thing. And as you can see, I'm very clumsy typer. I said it the other day. Uh, I am working with a brand new keyboard here. But even before then, I'm um, a slow and steady wins the race kind of guy when it comes to programming. I, you know, think, type a bit of code out, do a bit of thinking, type a bit of code out, that kind of, you know. It's not a race, is it? <laughs> At the end of the day, it's the quality of your code, not how quickly you wrote it. <laughs> But uh, very enjoyable using Vim. I've, I'm really glad that I've uh, got got used to it and got got uh, got comfortable with it. And I highly recommend you do the same if uh, if you uh, if you take to it and uh, you go through the Vim tutor and you kind of get the mentality of it. Right. I will see you next time for um, hopefully more interesting video than this. Have a lovely time and a lovely day. I've got to do my KVM switch, haven't I? Which I'm going to have to remember to do when I'm, uh, when I'm leaving so that I can actually stop my recording. <laughs> See you next time. Goodbye.